and welcome to the show. We start this week's Ferris episode with Steffa on GTA 5. Now, they are driving in a, I guess, a sort of convoy, because I've a lot of supercars and a Golf, but never mind. Uh, the Golf, unfortunately, comes across a piece of metal. And, well, turns out, uh, metal beats Golf. Uh, <laughs> I've been mean, driven around this area before. I, I don't remember ever getting stuck on this bit of scenery. I don't remember it ever doing this, and in fact the car's so well wedged it's now on fire. Uh, amazingly though, the player doesn't have time to get out and run away. But yeah, that that's a nasty, nasty bit of metal, pretty much. Uh, we're on to uh, Just Cause 2 for our next clip. Uh, trying to get away from the authority of They've set up a roadblock, but never fear, for the truck has a new method of clearing them out. I mean, it was... Relatively effective. I'm not going to say damage free. I mean, then the truck is you're also a little bit vulnerable to getting shot, but still, mighty impressive effort at getting past the roadblock. Turtle Boy up next on Just Cause 4 has managed to send an enemy tank flying. Uh, now, I've seen I've seen plenty of player vehicles go flying with this one. I can't say I've seen too many uh, enemy vehicles go flying. There's a more impressive thing as well about this particular one. So they shoot. I think just behind the tank, it goes flying through the air. It's a very, very impressive flip. But note, the AI has the time to shoot the player just before it lands and explodes. It doesn't kill the player vehicle, but I admire the dedication to that tanker crew in uh, trying to get, just to make sure that they got the shot off. That amateur ape is up next on Just Cause 3. Now, they are going... To be starting a time trial here. You've got a supercar, I can't remember the name of the vehicles on this game, but uh, you know, you've know, you got a very fast car, uh, and as soon as they uh, kind of go through the first checkpoint, the timer, the timer will begin, and within three seconds, it's managed to do a <laughs> double roll, but lands back on its wheels and can carry on. I mean, not a bad start, really. Uh, Spoon Cow is up next, or a very unusual game, but trying to, apparently they're saying they were trying to get to the cart thing to drift around. Now, okay, sure, we've all done it on games. There is something you can control. You try and mess around with it, and it turns out in this game, if you do manage to kind of get a serpentine drifty thing going on, you might freak the game out. <laughs> Some games are not designed to have drift... I don't think any game is designed to have drifty carts, but that they, that one didn't go so well. Uh, R27 Dan on breakfast has gone to space. Normally it's the cars. Not gonna lie, in this series, normally it's the cars that will go pinging up into orbit, but this time, no, it is the person, that's the furthest distance I've seen one of the actual characters get ragdolled, and then it fell out through the floor. Um, yeah, not really ideal, but mighty impressive. Mighty impressive there. Bonus up next on Project Cars 2, uh, driving some Formula Fords or whatever they're called on here, when there is a little mistake from an AI car with a wheel on the grass, and that's all it takes, really, for, for things to go wrong. When open wheelers make contact on this game, it normally leads to vehicles flying through the air, and uh, yeah, just that little wheel on the grass set up a chain reaction. Calvin Toller is up next on a set of Corsa with a motorbike. Yes, apparently there are motorbike mods now for this game, and you can tell this game is not so much designed for motorbikes, but fair play actually does look like it works quite well and everything. Uh, however, when things do go wrong, like you bounce off a wall, oop, it's a little bit weird, and now we're going to be... It almost recovers, it spins around on its side before it then falls through the floor, and it's then stuck. Yeah, not quite... Not quite what they were going for. The gutters are a bit a bit nasty. Uh, sampling up next on Gran Turismo 7. Now, admittedly, the first bump on the AI is intentional. Bullying an AI car out of the way. However, the AI are not prepared for the wet weather here at Le Mans. As, uh, well, having got rid of one car, there's all sorts of chaos going on up ahead. There is, I think it's a spinning GT86. The Porsche has had an accident. Up ahead, there's another car having a massive accident. I think that's a Lexus, and then it's just sort of dodging and dodging and dodging. And, well, I mean, they've got their way through. There's so much trouble. I guess the AIs maybe didn't have... Well, maybe it just started raining at this lap and everyone was... And they were still on slicks or something. Um, but, yeah, there is a big, a big problem for them. We're on to Grid Legends next with one of the most impressive car parks I have come across here. <laughs> We've got the Time Attack... Uh, Skyline, uh, well, I've got a lot of them. The player car here trying to 
force its way through. It does just about manage to find a gap and push one of the vehicles free, but it's a mighty impressive car park uh, that started from an AI vehicle here making a mistake. Uh, actually, no, it didn't make a mistake, sorry. It had an, an issue. I don't know whether it lost a tyre or broke down. Some sort of mechanical failure uh, on this one caused it to have to sort of grind to a halt, and then for whatever reason, it decided to leave the vehicle on sort of full lock, rolled down a bit, and then blocked the track. It's just like a vindictive player. And while you know, very sped up here, you see over the course of time, it's just collected all of the vehicles, and they're all now stuck there. So there we go. Well done, AI. Uh, Lewis elect on beam. Now they've managed to lose their bumper, and they are trying to get the bumper. They try, try and sort of get the bumper clean off the back. First attempt at scraping it on the barrier doesn't go. Second attempt goes a little bit too hard, and then they've lost control of the car. <laughs> Over it goes. It's a big roll. I seem to remember, was it Gordon Shedded at some point was going to get a mechanical flag for a loose bumper, so he took it off on a tyre bundle so he couldn't get the black flag anymore or whatever. This attempt did not go as well as that attempt, I have to say. And finally, we have got Small Man on SnowRunner. Uh, now, they are driving... I don't actually remember what vehicle this is. It's a big cat thing. And I think they're trying to push their friend through the mud. Uh, whatever truck is ahead of them has got far too big of a trailer for too smaller a truck, and it's not going very quickly. So, the cat is doing a fairly good job of pushing what it was. And then it manages to get underneath said big trailer, and then we have a problem. Uh, and probably should have not carried on pushing, but I would have done the same thing. Just drive underneath and see what happens. I mean, it's got the big trailer out of the mud, so the truck might be able to drive itself a little bit better forward until the said truck gets jackknifed and then stuck. I mean, the cat has managed to do an undertake. A relatively successful... Un well, I say relative... Success is definitely relative in, in this one. Uh... <laughs> Considering the way things could have gone on SnowRunner, a relative success. But now everyone's stuck in a different way. With the smaller truck jackknifed and kind of wedged against a lamppost. The truck that we are uh, kind of riding on board with uh, is free, but its trailer is wedged. I think it's one of the like logging trailers is actually now stuck under all of that. So there's going to have to be some winching and some messing around to get stuff free. But uh, yeah, I am surprised SnowRunner Physics allowed the driving underneath of a trailer to happen. But, you know, it's not a snow runner if you don't get stuck and then have to spend an hour trying to recover vehicles. That is the snow runner way. But there we go. That is going to be it for this episode. As ever, if you have clips you'd like to submit to this series, you can via a Google form. There'll be a link to it in the description. All the rules and how it works can be found on there. That, though, is going to be it from me. Thank you all very much for watching. Until next time, uh, yeah, goodbye.